Hello, it's Abaddon Sentinel here again, and I'm coming with another video based on a Warhammer Community article. Now, I wasn't intending to do another video on an article so soon, uh, but I couldn't actually resist with this one. Uh, there's a couple of uh, good reasons why, uh, which I'll explain to you while I'm looking at it, but this video is going to focus more towards people who are looking to take their painting to a competition standard. Obviously, my painting's not a competition standard, but I'm going to explain why articles like this are brilliant for you if you are, you know, attempting to do that, which I hope to do eventually. So I'll uh, get on over to the article now. Okay, so here it is, and you'll see why it's uh, kind of relevant to me, but it's Painting Showcase Abaddon the Despoiler. So, without going into everything that's written here, I just wanted to show you, obviously there's three different uh, Abaddons that they've shown, and the reason that this article is good, especially if you're looking to increase your uh, painting skills and try and figure out how to how to get things to like a competition worthy standard, is because it just comes with little tidbits of information like uh, like down here, this one by Jacob Rune Nielsen. Uh, now he's won several Slayer swords before. Uh, he actually explains a little bit about his uh, choices of colours and tones. Um, now you can see he says basically. You want it to draw focus to the face on the uh, on the model, uh, and he's chosen colours based around what's going to make that happen. So the, it says here the skulls, for instance, were kept a subtle grey instead of painting them in a light bone colour. Um, and if I look at the picture there, you can see down at the bottom that the skulls, even though you can see them and they are painted, they've got shading on them, things like that. Uh, they don't they don't stand out too much it's not like they're stealing your attention away from you know the main feature which is Abaddon himself uh, now in my video where I explained um, like my choices painting the base um, I explained a similar kind of thing now obviously I've not kept it so muted as this um, I think that's partly because you know I'm, I'm still quite obsessed with trying to make it paint everything up to like the same kind of standard um, and have everything looking consistent in terms of brightness but obviously if you're looking at competition painting not everything's supposed to be the same kind of brightness I have actually uh, had similar kind of advice before when I entered a painting competition at uh, a local uh, Warhammer store and it's the, the, the fact that he explains that colour choice in the little um, interview that they did with him about his uh, about the paint job um, you can actually see exactly what he's talking about so those muted colors so uh, I mean, even the space marine you can see that it's got that bluish tint to it you can see that it's most likely going, going to have been an ultramarine before um, but it's just so dulled down without actually losing detail the, to inspect it, you can, you can see that it's still a brilliant paint job, but it doesn't draw you away from the main focus of, uh, of the model, which is Abaddon's face. Even the bright sword, the colours themselves, there's not too much going on there. He's, he's got the reds, he, he's got the orange, very subtle blending between them, but it doesn't take attention away from the face. Um, the same goes for the entire thing. If you look at the cape on the back, there we are, again, Nothing has been lost detail wise. The paint job is still immaculate, but it's muted down, so it's not stealing the attention. Um and it's it's these kind of tips that you need to pay attention to if you're gonna try and up that standard of painting uh, to like a competition level. Um you know, even if you don't think you're good enough to you know, critique someone else's work, it's always good to actually do that. Um you know, if you're looking at someone else's paint job, uh, think about how you might have done things differently. Think, think what seems to work and what doesn't. Um, you know, for this particular one, an amazing paint job. I would not be able to paint to this stunt. Hopefully, I will be able to. You know, uh, one day soon. Uh, but you know, this 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 paint job's way above my standard. But you can still pick out things that you might do differently. Not saying that obviously it's bad. But things that you might do differently. For for example, the sword on this particular one, done by what's his name, uh, Bastian von Biel. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, this particular one on the sword. 
like to me I know I've been talking about like not stealing the attention away from like the focal points of the model which in this case uh, again it's probably going to be the face I think uh, he was trying to go for here um, but again he's used brighter colors on most of the other things and the sword to me I feel like that could have just been highlighted maybe a little bit more to, to bring out a couple of the edges maybe on the on the faces um, and towards the tip of the blade uh, you, you might agree with me you might disagree you know obviously it's a, this kind of artwork is still a very subjective thing um, I mean there's plenty of stuff obviously that I really do like about this version like I'm loving the dirt and weathering on the bottom of the cape obviously you know played on the fact that it is torn and ragged uh, he's actually put that kind of uh, weathered appearance into the paintwork as well as just the detailing on the model now I'll go back up to the one at the top again and again brilliant paint job I absolutely love it I love the the purples and blues on the sword um, and I love the fact that you know the the focal point again is the face I, I, I think that is probably the right way to to go in my opinion for, for if you're trying to make a focal point on this model because so they give you three options for the faces in the kit for Abaddon uh, so it's obvious that they want the face to be a, a you know a big part of um, the look of your model, uh, how, how you present your Abaddon. So making the face a focal point is is quite cool, I think. Um, now, obviously, they've got the red glow on this. Uh, he said specifically that he's try he's taken inspiration from and he's trying to make it look a bit like, uh, you know, the famous painting of uh, Horus and the Emperor uh, standing over Sanguinius. So obviously, there's a very red glow going on there. Um, and it suits him. Personally, I would probably have tried to uh, mute that red glow down a little bit. You know, it's, it, to me on that, it's a little bit too overpowering. Um, not a massive amount, only a small amount. Uh, I, I just would have kept it a little bit further back than that. But again, the model, the, the paint job on this model is is really nice. I think. Um, Again, probably maybe I would have gone a little bit more highlighting on the sharp edges of the talon. Um, you know, just to give it that bit of extra definition and make it look sharp. Uh, but to considering the the kind of beaten up look that he's he said he was wanting to go for with the armour, I think he's done a very good job of um, doing that with, with the armour panels. Uh, you know, you're not, you've not just got like a, a flat black surface or you've not just got like a, a gradient highlight where the light's catching it. He's managed to make it look, even on those flat surfaces, like there's bits of chip in there, like the, the paint works, um, you know, not not smooth. Um, it's, it's quite a good um, paint job. So you can see why articles like this are quite good to look at. If you're trying to elevate your uh, painting talent, uh, you know, you're trying to get your skill up to a, a higher standard, looking at these kind of things, reading what they're saying, the reasons why they've painted stuff, and forming your own opinions on whether or not it works is very important. Now, you may or may not agree with some of the comments I've made about these models. I'd quite like to hear from you. If you wanted to comment down below and tell me what you think of each of them, um, take a look at the article yourself. Have a, have a bit more of a read through of the specific decisions. Like I said, I'm not going to go into every detail. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Well, I hope you found that one interesting. Uh, remember to like this video if you did, uh, comment down below and hit that subscribe button. And uh, popping up here, you should be able to see my uh, latest video on this side and whichever YouTube recommends for you on this side. Talk to you later.